Well, hey everybody, I'm Jan Erickson from Stepping Aside and welcome to Somewhat Daily Tarot and Rune for the first day of Aug... I did it again. I did this on Esoteric Influences. October 2020. No, I'm not reluctant to move into my favorite month of all. Uh, I'm not afraid to turn a year older. I'm not afraid of any of that. So I don't know why I keep saying it's... I start to say it's the first day of August, but it's not. It's the first day of October 2020. And, and we have a dual one energy, one for the month and one for the day, and then 22 for the year. So, you know, we're really talking about uh, soul level manifestation when you talk about the one and the 22. So allow that to really influence your day to day and uh, see if we can't turn a corner uh, in terms of how we perceive things and, and also in terms of our relationships that have been so damaged over the last four years. Uh, it's not going to happen in a day's time, but you never know. The power of spirit can pretty much accomplish anything. So uh, maybe it can, you know, maybe there'll be one event that just shakes people up, you know, that says, oh, that gets them to pay attention to what's really happening in life. And uh, uh, so, yeah, I mean, it can happen on a dime, but, but, I don't know. At least we could make a step forward today. Intuition is strong, uh, and it is with the reading as well because we have the moon involved. Uh, again, I, I shuffled and shuffled and shuffled and split the deck so many different ways, and I took the 13th card each time, and I still came up with this guy today. So clearly, you know, misuse of authority and, and, and it's a rubious type of an energy. Um, I've been getting a lot of that. When I do the esoteric influences, when I do the write-up on the blog, I add a geomancy reading as well that I don't put in the newsletter and I don't put, uh, uh, I, don't, I don't include it in the video. And so you get a little extra if you go to the blog and look at the write-up, you know, because you can have a geomancy reading for the day. And, and I keep... There's all that for the last, I don't know, a couple of weeks or so, there's been a tremendous amount of unstable energy, uh, Rubius energy, Pur, Puella. Uh, those two are younger energies, but Rubius is an adult type of an energy that's misuse of power, either or thinking, can't really see the subtleties of anything. Um, and I really think. I, well, I'm beginning to think since this since the four of Pentacles is coming up so often here, uh, especially as we get closer to the election, it's, it, it's almost like it's saying pay attention to this factor in your life. Um, and unfortunately, the one we all share is the greater, you know, uh, societal thing with with the president and the issues that he seems to have just intrinsic within himself to be unable to do the job that he was, I guess, elected to do. I don't believe the election was actually uh, valid, but we'll find that out going forward if that's true. Um, there's just some weird anomalies that made this happen, and weird anomalies don't happen. So somebody did that. And I don't know who, but I just, I don't believe it's even valid. And so I think the last four years have been uh, extraordinarily difficult, uh, especially as most of us watch in horror what he does. And, and now that you see what's happened during this last year <clears throat> with respect to the virus, um, we really see somebody who's not capable of doing this job, um, way too focused on his own, his own self, uh, his own wealth. Um, he turns his back to the kingdom, as we've spoken about this card many, many times. You know, the four is about your structure. So not only, you know, the earth element in terms of the physical surroundings, our work life, our home life, where we live, uh, all of that, the physical manifestation collectively and within society, within the world. But it's also about who we are inside and, and what defines us. And in the case of the guy, the, the, in case of the current president, it's about maintaining his wealth and, and the power that he wants with it and the dictatorial way he wishes to go about things. Uh, and also the fact that he does not understand, he doesn't have a, a sense of history. He doesn't have a sense of who we all are as a country. But the but he also doesn't really even seem to be driven by any set of values. 
you know, that, that, that are shared by, by the collective, you know, it's all about self-dealing and transactional behavior, irrespective of the impact on other people, right? And, and I think that that's fairly clear at this point. Uh, and so I, I, I understand why it keeps coming up, but it's just odd when I did it, when I took the reading out today, I was like, oh my God, here we go again. Could we have one day without this guy? But evidently not. You know, I suppose on the one level it makes sense, but on another, I don't know. Um, but let's take a look at the moon. Oh, we also have the Knight of Wands in the reading. But we have the moon, which indicates deception. Uh, that's not the only thing that it, it indicates. But we have the moon looking down, none, none too happy at the two dogs barking down below it. Um, she, and today we have the full moon in Aries. So, you know, maybe there's a little Aries, Aries, uh, attitude there with the moon. Uh, it's at, and I did look, I wasn't sure of the time. Uh, it's at nine degrees Aries at 206 PM today. So if you're wanting to work magic around the full moon, the full moon, it goes full at 206 in the afternoon, at least my time, Pacific daylight time. If you want to do a triple aspect reading, which I kind of wrote, just the basis, the basics of, of of one up on the Patreon page. I did that over there. So you, you'll have, it's locked though to patrons. So you'll have to like donate a dollar or whatever f for the month to see all of, all of October. And then, but then you'll see all of October's posts, right? It's not just for that. It's for all of October. So you can do it for the whole year. You can do it monthly. You don't have to, and you don't have to commit to any more than a particular month. You don't have to do anything like that. And I think I have the lowest tier set at a dollar. In fact, I don't think I have any tiers anymore. I think it's just like donate. And I think the minimum donation is a dollar. So anyhow, but it gets you for the whole month of October if you want to do that over at Patreon. And there's a link here on the video below it um, that takes you to that page. So anyway, anyway, we have the moon. And uh, again, if you want to work a, a, a triple aspect reading, you would start it just before during the maiden phase and then finish out with the crone phase afterwards. So, you know, like say between two o'clock and and say 215 you could do a spell right in that kind of that time and kind of have a, a container or a ritual or whatever but have sort of a container effect to keep the power of the triple aspects of the moon working for you in that regard so something to think about anyway i like to do stuff like that i i don't know why you know but i do Usually I, I, I like to work in the crone phase of things. So I like to work in the dark, the dark right before the new moon. You've got a few days there, which is the dark phase. I like to do void, of course, workings where there's just, so you're kind of in this hollowed out place where it's just you and, and you don't really have any other energies affecting you. Uh, you can really stay focused. I like to do that, but then I'm a crone. So what do you do about that? I don't know. If I were much younger, I might do things in the maiden phase <laughs> or in the mother, but you know. I'm where I am now. So it's just a natural progression. Anyway, again, and the moon is about progression too. In cycles, you see the lobster coming up out of the pool representing, see the, the lobster sheds its skin, right? So you have rebirth all the time with the lobsters, always in this state of rebirth every time they shed their skin, right? I don't know how often they do that, but but every time they do, they do. Uh, in a sense, you know, you've got dogs that shed their, their fur, you know, come spring. And uh, so in a sense, they're, they're, re they're, they're they're coming anew as, as well there in terms of their own cycles but here we have the the dark and the light dog representing the shadow side of self and spirit at least in my ter my terms they do uh, you can think of them as the polarity within you see the two towers and you see the the pathway coming down from the mountain and it splits the peak if you look way up here you can see the peak is split and so again you're looking at you know, what was then and, and, and what is now or what is then and what's coming. Uh, you can look at this in a variety of different ways. But you're looking at dreams, emotions, cycles, uh, again, rebirth and transformation, awakening, intuition, illusion, deception, change. Uh, all of that uh, is what you're looking at when you look at the moon. And you feel the influence of the moon, the 18th card of the major arcana. Now that's going to be a nine energy, uh, so endings. So you can also think of it, 
especially with the aspect of, of intuition there, is maybe the end of illusion, the moving past illusion, uh, being aware that something is happening that, that you can't understand uh, about it, the illusory aspect of it, the projection of that by someone else. And, and typically in this reading, we're talking about this guy. Again, turning his back to the kingdom, holding on to his own wealth. And how is he doing that realistically? You know, how is he doing that at all? Is he, is he using our country as, as uh, the chit to pay in what he owes here in a couple of years? How is that working? Or is this referring to someone in our personal life that's trying to pull, pull the wool over our eyes personally? You know, is, is, it, is it hitting a little bit more closely to home? Have you been feeling like maybe there's some deception going on in your life and you can't figure out what it is? And the, and the pentacles that, that the person is holding close to them is the truth of what their behavior is all about that they don't wish to be forthcoming about. Uh, either way, you're looking at it uh, from the standpoint of, I need to know what's going on. Well, we have a full moon tonight, you know, bask in its glory, stand underneath it, r uh, raise your arms in supplication to the goddess, you know, and whoever lives inside the moon, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't think it's a satellite, I think it's a ship. So anyway, that's just me. I, I, there's, there, you've got indigenous people who have, have tribal memories of the moon being towed here. So I kind of put my faith in them. Uh, I, I'm, I'm sort of shamanistic in the things I do. And, and I tend to lend, to, to, to lend credence to what a shaman says. Uh, they're, a, they're accessing information that that is that is essentially so far in the past that that uh, I don't know something feels you know when the thing doesn't have its own orbit when it doesn't spin on its own and it just follows us around it's parked so but in any event you can still raise your arms in supplication to the goddess and and draw down goddess blessings tonight and awaken to whatever's going on Feel your intuition. Feel that work for you. Understand the deception that's in play, whether it's the collective crap we're dealing with or whether it's something going on in your personal life. You have maybe have been feeling a sense of unease of late and you're just not really sure where that's going. Well, this may be what's going on. You've got somebody who's holding fast to the truth and isn't communicating anything to you that you need to know. So you're going to have to divine it yourself. You're going to have to decide, you know, either the person can be honest with you or you're going to have to decide what the truth is and then behave accordingly, you know, and if it doesn't actually happen to be exactly what that person is doing, oh, well, they could have been honest, right? And if they're not, that's their problem. Well, we have the Knight of Wands and, and uh, we have a, a Knight's Templar, possibly a Knight of some kind, his horse rearing up uh, in, in protection of legacy. And when you're talking about deception, it could have something that's impacting. The deception could be impacting our legacy. And so he's standing there almost at the gateway to awakening. You see the three pyramids there indicating the Holy Land. And I think that he's really standing in the way of any further deception. He's saying, no, you have to go through me. And I'm not going to let you do that anymore. So in a sense, it's, it's representing the spiritual warrior within, especially given that it's wands and the fire element. <clears throat> so you're seeing the spark of creativity, the spark of manifestation. And I really think that this guy, even though knights are typically on a quest, well, this is a quest to protect our legacy. And who is he looking at? He's looking at this guy in the reading. So he's looking to protect the legacy against deception and control and misuse of power and, and, and focusing then on, on action and progress. He's taking a risk on our behalf uh, to stand up and speak truth to power and say, look, you know, what we have become and what we've built together is too important for this guy, again, whether, you know, what's his name in the Oval Office, or if there's somebody, you know, even if it's us, if we're getting in the way of something like that and being deceptive to other people, when you do that, you affect the legacy that you've all built together. 
In other words, the relationship that you've built together. The tangible stuff could be anything at all. It's the relationship together that matters. And that's what's become pretty much in tatters these days for, for a lot of people. You know, you look at you look at, 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 at families torn apart by this guy, right? Whether again, whether it's the collective nonsense we're dealing with or it's something in your personal life, right? But we have we have Thurazaz again today, the third rune of the Elder Futhark. We're gonna break through uh we're we're gonna break through whatever whatever lies and deception and illusion that's going on. And we're going to allow, it's basically Isa and Kenaz focused inward. We're going to align in source presence and we're going to know what the truth is. You've got source presence going inward here with, with the directionality of Kenaz there. It looks like the thorn, doesn't it? It's a water, or excuse me, fire element rune. It represents Thor's hammer, defense, new beginnings, protection, opposition, impulsive behavior. It also represents giants and chaos, or the illusion of such. Uh, and I just think that right now we're, we're trying to break through the illusion and the lies and the deception. Right now we're dealing with a virus that's spiking again. Uh, I looked at the death toll just around here in my county, and I couldn't believe what it was. I don't remember what it said. But we went along there. We had like one, and then maybe just a handful, and now we've got a whole bunch more. So to think that it's not us, uh, um, and, we, and we've been relatively, uh, it, we haven't had a whole lot of the virus over here, although people have had it. Uh, more people that, than not have, not have, t have tested negative, which is good. But with, and I think that they're holding back on schools right now. I, I've read, although I don't know. Uh, you have to check that, you know, every day to see what else they've decided, right? The problem is, is if we don't get on the same page with all of this and break through the illusion and break through the lies and break through the deception, what's life going to look like? You know, you've got the CDC director saying, yeah, wear a mask. If we all did that between now and the end of the year, we might reduce the number of, they're thinking 200,000 more deaths they're projecting just between now and the end of the year with this second phase. He says we might eliminate 100,000 off that. Well, I mean, 100,000 people dying is still way too much, isn't it? You know, so, so and, the, and the over 200,000 that, that have passed already is outrageous. So if we can't get on the same page and break through the illusion that we've been living under, or some of us have, I don't, you know, we're going to end up in Fortuna Minor. And not Fortuna Major, but Fortuna Minor. Which is a little bit fortunate. You get some progress along the way. But what we could have had is no more, basically. It's not going to happen. If we can't you know, break through all of this. You know, 9 and 4 is 13, so we're looking at a 4 energy. How are we going to define who we are? How are we going to define our own individual structure within the group, our, our own foundation? Our foundation, really, again, we can look at the tangibility of all of it, but realistically, it's the values we have. So what are they? Are they self-dealing or do or do or are they service to others where where you think about the and, and you extend compassion and empathy to other people that are having a difficult time? Do you have the ability to do that? Or are you so self-absorbed that you can't see anyone else and the needs of anyone else? This is this guy, but is that what you want to be? Or do you want to be the spiritual warrior within who protects and defends? all that we've become, all that we're becoming together. So, anyhow, that's it. <laughs>
I will not see you tomorrow. I will see you on Monday. I do this four days a week. But do check in on the uh, Esoteric Influences. I do a weekend edition on Fridays for Friday and Saturday. And then it starts up all over again on Sunday. I'll send a newsletter out on Sunday with the whole week. I, I don't put the Geomancy readings, though, in that, by the way. I think I said that already. Um, those go on the blog every day. Uh, well, the days that I publish this on the blog. I don't I don't on Saturdays because I'm, I'm writing the newsletter, so finishing that up, but uh, doing the interpretations for that for the week. Um, actually, I start, it, I start that process today, but, but I really focus in and, and get it done on, on Saturday. But I, I flesh it out today and tomorrow and then, you know. So I just don't, I don't do any writing. I don't do anything on the blog on Saturdays. But uh, uh, in any event, um, I will see you again on Monday for this. And uh, I hope to see you then. Click subscribe here. I'd love you to do that. And check out the blog. Uh, this does go up with the esoteric influences on the side panel over there. It, it, it's, a, it's below the newsletter sign up. So it's just go to the blog, look on the left side panel, start scrolling down, and you'll see all of that. It won't take you long to get there. And uh, be good to yourself. Be good to one another. Wear a mask if you go out around anyone at all, whether you're inside or out. Please have a mask on if you're around other people. Uh, and, and let us get past this virus and let us, let us get command of it between now and when we finally have a vaccine. So in any event, have a good day and blessed be.